Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the horror slasher films from 2024, titled Stream. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The movie begins with someone secretly recording a small establishment called the Pines Hotel. Inside, we see the hotel owner, Linda Spring, vacuuming the area, when she suddenly hears noises coming from a distance. She turns off the vacuum to check if anyone is there, but when she tries to restart the vacuum, it doesn't start. This is when she notices that its cord has mysteriously been cut. Just then, someone startles Linda from behind, and it turns out to be the maintenance guy, Brad. Linda shows him the severed cord, and he blames it on the rats. Worried, she decides to go to the basement to check it out, but Brad stops her, saying he'll take care of it himself. After the young man leaves, Linda decides to call it a night. But suddenly, she is thrown by a mysterious figure. The injured woman tries to get up and escape, but the attacker soon captures and drags her away. The scene then cuts to the home of a man named Roy Keenan, who is watching old videos of his kids and feeling emotional. But moments later, the tape suddenly jams, so Roy heads over to his son Kevin's room to ask for help. Kevin is in the middle of live streaming a video game, and upon Roy's continued insistence, he reluctantly pauses the game and agrees to help. While the tech-savvy kid is fixing the tape, the doorbell rings, and Roy rushes to check. It turns out to be police officers with his teenage daughter, Taylor, who has been arrested for trying to steal liquor from a store. The officers warn her that she might not be as lucky the next time. After they leave, an enraged Roy scolds his daughter for being rebellious, but the young girl yells back at her dad for being controlling, and storms off to her room. Afterward, Roy and his wife, Elaine, discuss their daughter's behavior and become very worried. Elaine then suggests that maybe the family should get away for the weekend to spend some time together. Roy likes the idea and gives it the green light, so his wife immediately goes to book the Pines Hotel. The scene then cuts to the hotel basement, where we see a terrified Linda tied to a chair, begging for help. A mysterious figure dressed in all black then arrives with a drill, and ignores her cries. The next day, the Keenan family arrives at the Pines Hotel, where they meet the receptionist, Mr. Lockwood. Meanwhile, Taylor, who is very annoyed to be here, spots two French guys, Theo and Louis, drinking at the bar. She overhears them talking about going to see her favorite band Life. Taylor shares that she also bought tickets for the concert, but her parents forced her to come here instead. They then exchange introductions, and Theo shows interest in Taylor. Elsewhere, the rest of the Keenan family is checking in at the reception, when Lockwood informs them that they don't have an electronic payment system due to ongoing construction. He also reveals that there is no Wi-Fi at the hotel, which irritates young Kevin, so Lockwood reassures the boy that this inn is all about spending quality time with the people he cares about. Meanwhile, at the bar, Taylor and Theo are taking pictures while Louis watches them with annoyance. Taylor then receives a call from her mom, so Theo gives her his room number, and invites her to visit him later, to which she agrees. In another scene, Lockwood is rolling dice at the reception, when an elderly janitor named Oswald arrives, and asks who he is. He wonders where Linda is, and Lockwood explains that she hired him to help around the hotel. Lockwood then claims that she is in the back room, and asks the old man to go there if he needs to speak with her. Elsewhere, Kevin and Roy notice Brad installing a wireless security camera in the hallway. Kevin asks how it works since they don't have Wi-Fi, and Brad explains that they do have it, but not for the guests. Meanwhile, Oswald arrives in a storeroom looking for Linda, right when this happens. The hell's going on? Later, after making sure that her family is asleep, Taylor sneaks out and heads to Theo's room. Theo is over the moon to see her and welcomes her in, but Louis doesn't seem too thrilled. Taylor then suggests going to the roof to smoke, and even though Louis disagrees, Theo insists it's a great idea. In another room, a girl wearing a mask sneaks into the newlywed couple's room. The couple soon notices her and orders her to leave, but another masked person arrives and strikes the husband's head with a champagne bottle. 
The killer then drowns the poor man in the jacuzzi, while his wife is being restrained by the masked girl. Moments later, the woman manages to flee into the hallway, where she desperately screams for help, but she is soon caught by the killer. Elsewhere, Roy and Elaine finally notice their daughter's absence. They assume she might be with the French guys, so Roy and Kevin decide to go look for her. The father and son head to the reception area, but find it empty. Frustrated, they try to exit, only to realize that the door is locked as well. Roy then notices a camera nearby, and here we see a masked person is observing them from a distance. Meanwhile, Elaine is in her room when she hears knocking at the door. She peeks through the hole, and a masked figure suddenly pops up outside. Elaine assumes it's just some kids messing with her and threatens to report it to the front desk. This prompts the stranger to walk away. But she soon hears her keycard beep, and assumes it's her husband and son returning. To her horror, they are nowhere to be seen, and the door is now open, so she closes it again. On the other hand, Roy arrives outside another guest's room, and asks if she has seen his daughter, who was hanging out with two French boys. The woman responds that she hasn't, and promptly closes the door on him. At that moment, a man overhears the conversation, and reveals that the French guys are next to his room. The man then introduces himself as David, and finds the whole situation strange, noting that all the doors are locked, and there's no internet or phone service available. Meanwhile, as Elaine is reading in her room, a masked person suddenly appears and attacks her. She puts up a brave fight, and strikes him with whatever she can find. However, the killer eventually overpowers her, he throws a knife at her back, and eventually finishes his job by slashing her throat with barbed wire. At this point, we see Mr. Lockwood in a room full of CCTV footage, watching everything unfold. It turns out that he has orchestrated a sinister game, and has sent several masked players to kill the hotel guests in the most creative ways possible. He is currently live-streaming this deadly game to his online audience for a profit of millions. The scene then cuts to the rooftop, where we see Taylor and Theo having a romantic moment. She suggests that they leave the hotel, and go to the concert, to which he agrees. They then decide to climb down the stairs to the ground floor, as they don't want to be stopped by her parents. Elsewhere, Roy and Kevin knock on the French boy's room, but no one answers. They thus decide to return to their room, hoping Taylor has come back. Following this, the scene cuts to the basement, where we see Lockwood dealing with Oswald, who is tied up to a chair with his mouth taped. When Lockwood removes the tape, the old janitor begs for mercy, and even promises to help the psychopath with his plans. However, Lockwood simply puts the tape back on him. He then gets the camera ready, and begins butchering him with a knife while live-streaming the entire thing. Since he is busy killing Oswald, he doesn't notice on the CCTV footage that Taylor and Theo have managed to escape the hotel. On the other hand, the father and son arrive at their room, but Roy notices blood on the door and becomes worried. He orders his son to stay put and heads into the bedroom, where he discovers the lifeless body of Elaine. A shocked Roy then begins to cry in despair, and when Kevin tries to enter the room, Roy asks him to stay outside. He then tries to call 911, but realizes that his phone is out of service, leaving him frustrated and helpless. Next, a worried Kevin asks where mom is, but the father simply says they need to find his sister soon. Just then, David arrives, and it turns out he's a police officer, so Roy shows the cop Elaine's dead body. After this, they all head to David's room, where they lock Kevin in the bedroom, and ask him to stay there and play his video game. In the bathroom, Roy cries and becomes worried about his daughter, so the cop grabs a gun, and assures Roy that they will find her at any cost. Before leaving, Roy instructs Kevin not to open the door for anyone other than himself. Elsewhere, we see Theo and Taylor driving away from the hotel, but it seems the girl has started to regret her decisions. She recalls how her parents were excited about this trip, and feels bad that she has caused trouble once again. Back in the hotel, David and Roy are in the pool area, searching for Taylor when suddenly, a drunk guy appears, complaining about how he can't open any doors. His wife also shows up, and begins scolding him loudly. It is at this point that Lockwood makes a surprise announcement to all the guests. He reveals that all of the guests are participants in a deadly game, and he can't wait for them to meet his four masked killers. After saying this, 
Lockwood turns off all the lights in the hotel, causing all hell to break loose. To their surprise, by the time the lights eventually come back on, the drunk guy and his wife have already been slaughtered. Just then, the masked killers show up, and start killing the guests indiscriminately. Roy pleads with David to use his gun, but for some reason, the cop is unable to do that. The two men then hide behind the pool bar, hiding in horror as the killers slaughter everyone in sight. On the other hand, Lockwood notices a breach in his security system and becomes alarmed. It turns out that Kevin, who is a tech genius, has managed to hack into Lockwood's system. The young boy watches in horror as CCTV footage shows a masked player killing Louis by slamming his head against a vending machine. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lockwood realizes that Kevin is behind the hack and video calls him. The scared boy asks where his family is, but Lockwood insists that he should be more worried about his mother's safety. This freaks Kevin out so he drops his iPad, and immediately rushes out of the room. The scene then cuts to the hallway, where three guests, Sebastian, Sarah, and Michelle, notice two masked players in the distance. The trio thinks they're just cosplaying and don't think much of it, but the players soon begin approaching them creepily while dancing. Before the guests can comprehend what's happening, Michelle is stabbed to death. A horrified Sarah manages to run away in the nick of time, but Sebastian is unfortunately captured. The killers then nail the poor boy's hand to the door, play tic-tac-toe on his body with a knife, and proceed to brutally mutilate him. Shortly after, as Sarah is looking for a hideout, she unexpectedly meets Kevin. The two soon come across a masked player, and they begin running away down the hallway in panic. They desperately knock on the nearby doors but to no avail, while being approached by the killer. The duo then tries to escape through the elevator, but Sarah is captured by a killer from inside it, while Kevin manages to get away. Meanwhile, Lockwood watches the entire situation unfold on the cameras with amusement. He commends the brother-sister killers for racking up style points, which reveals that the killers are competing with each other. Returning to the elevator, we see Sarah escaping from the killer's grasp, and running away. She reaches the storage room, where the masked woman catches up. Sarah uses a trolley to push her away, but the woman forces her down against it. In a desperate move, Sarah grabs a nearby fork and stabs the masked woman in the neck, instantly killing her. She quickly looks around, and finds a small window to escape. Sarah then attempts to flee, but another attacker appears and grabs her leg to stop her. With fierce determination, Sarah kicks off the killer and manages to get out. And now, she believes that she is finally safe. But... In the meantime, Roy and David arrive at David's room to find Kevin, but he is nowhere to be seen. And then suddenly, a masked killer appears out of nowhere and begins to attack them. He brutally beats up Roy, and is about to kill him with a piece of furniture but David shoots the killer from behind, leading to his elimination. Elsewhere, Kevin is hiding at the kitchen counter, while the masked guy is searching for him. Unfortunately, the killer soon notices the boy's reflection on the fridge, and captures him. But before he can cause any real damage, he hears a security breach ordering all players to report the disturbance, so he releases the boy. On the other hand, Taylor and Theo return to the hotel, only to come across Michelle and Sebastian's dead bodies. And then, a masked player appears out of nowhere and attacks them. The killer brutally impales both of them with a single spear to the wall, finishing them off. Elsewhere, Roy is once again attacked by a killer, and he begs David for help. But this time, the officer suddenly reveals that he has secured his win, and just needs to get out of this place. It turns out that the winner can earn a large sum of money if they're the last living guest, and he's very much looking forward to it. David then heads to Lockwood's office, which is now empty, and checks on a computer. It is revealed that he has placed a significant bet on himself, and is about to earn a large amount of money. As David is excitedly looking for a way out, he notices Roy and the killer fighting. David urges Roy to give up, claiming that his family is already dead, and there's no point in continuing. Just then, both Roy and the killer momentarily go out of the camera's view, and soon only the masked killer reappears. David is overjoyed to see Roy is finally dead, 
making him the last surviving guest. Now, all he needs to do is find a safe exit, after which he can claim victory in the game. But before he can figure out his next step, a killer suddenly arrives, and stabs the cop with a knife. It turns out to be Lockwood, and he accuses David of cheating and manipulating the game. He also claims that betters are never allowed to interfere with the process. As the injured man lies on the ground, Lockwood reveals that David wouldn't have won anyway, since Kevin is still alive. After saying this, he ends the cop's sorry life with a power drill. Lockwood then informs the remaining two killers that only one guest remains alive, and whoever kills him will earn triple points. At the same time, Taylor is still alive. She pulls out the spear that is stuck in her stomach not too deeply. Elsewhere, one of the masked killers finds Kevin in the kitchen, but the player is revealed to be none other than Roy. It turns out he managed to kill a player previously and took his place. Roy asks his son to play dead while he deals with the last killer. Shortly after, the other player arrives in the kitchen, so Roy pretends to carry Kevin's lifeless body and tries to exit the room. However, Lockwood is watching the footage and quickly realizes that it is Roy pretending to be a killer. He relays this information to the other player, causing the two men to get into a brutal fight. After a lengthy scuffle, Roy gains the upper hand and presses the masked player's face onto a stove. Kevin then turns on the heat, which ends up setting the player's face on fire. Upon witnessing all of this, Lockwood gets incensed and decides to kill Roy himself. He grabs an axe, and arrives in the lobby, where he finally finds the father and son. Roy accuses him of being sick and playing with people's lives, but Lockwood justifies himself by saying that it's just sports, and no different than gladiatorial battles from centuries ago. The two men then engage in a fight, which ends with Roy knocking Lockwood out with a series of brutal punches. After this, he approaches his terrified son and comforts him. But then, someone stabs him from behind and it turns out to be Taylor. She actually mistook him for a killer after seeing his attire. Taylor is shocked to see that it's her dad and apologizes profusely, but the damage has already been done, and he tragically passes away in her arms. In the aftermath, Lockwood regains consciousness, and goes to attack Taylor. He pins her to the wall and is about to choke her to death. But at the last moment, Taylor kicks the man's balls, grabs a nearby axe, and chops off the man's head, finally bringing an end to this twisted game. In the final scene, some cops arrive at the hotel and rescue the siblings. Here, the movie takes another dark turn when several paramedics are shown watching the live stream, and the winners turn out to be Kevin and Taylor. Later, the game organizer announces that the event was a success, and that he will return with an even more sinister game, which will take place in a hospital. Hearing this, excitement builds across the country, as millions of viewers eagerly look forward to the next round of this dark competition. Okay guys, thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.